Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm EVM and this is the Volkswagen ID4. Now, when I recently tested the ID3, I didn't get on with it that well. I thought the interior quality, the materials used, was subpar for a car that approached £40,000. Now, don't get me wrong, I didn't dislike it. I thought the outside was nice. It was roomy and practical on the inside. The ride was very good. It's just that interior, it wasn't good enough for what I know Volkswagen can achieve. The ID4 though is not just one notch higher in the numbers, it's bigger, it's roomier, it's more practical, and it's got a better interior. So hopefully that means that this is effectively an ID3 with all the flaws ironed out. If that's the case, we could be on to a very good electric car. <laughs> As always, we'll have a look around the outside, then the inside, and take it on the road. I'm gonna be uh, brutally honest with you, I'm kind of struggling now, at this point. I mean, you could take this badge off, put any badge on the front of it, in SUV world anyway, and no one would question it. It's got no real design flair, nothing different. You could see this coming on the street, or uh, in the distance on a motorway, or just passing you as you're walking along the pavement. And I don't think you'd even notice it was there. It's, it's very safe, and a lot of people might want that. You might like a car that just looks like a car. I'd like a little bit extra, rather than this, same as everything else on the road. But, again, that's just me. You might think it's the best looking thing in the world. Well, from the side, again, not that exciting. I do quite like the way that this line tails down and disappears into the wing, that's quite nice. Um, and the way that it hides its dimensions. So it's got a black roof, and this silver bit takes your eye away so from afar at least it looks like it's a sloping kind of coupe look now the charging flap 125 kilowatts which i think <laughs> which i think is about right for a battery size that is 77 kilowatt hours for this one now in terms of size it's a little bit bigger um, both in length width and height than the volkswagen tiguan so that just gives you an idea of what we're looking at so it's a big car yeah i quite like this the light bar that goes across the rear there, that's quite effective. It's got a very short rear window, does hamper visibility a little bit, but I'll show you the interior in a second. And you just kind of coupe itself down at the back. It does slope down, uh, as I showed you from the side. Once again, if you saw this in the distance, in the motorway or wherever, you wouldn't know what it was really, unless you knew your cars. Um, now, the one thing that uh, is very good, which I do like whilst we're at the back, is the fact that this can tow up to 1,000 kilograms of unbraked weight. So that's good. That's something which I think more electric vehicles need to do. People want to tow. The button for the boot is just here next to the number plate, which means it's going to get filthy and therefore your hands are going to get filthy. There's also a reverse parking camera in the same spot, although it's got a little jet wash thingy for that. Why didn't they just do what they've done on most Volkswagens and stuck it here? I mean, it's properly big as this, isn't it? I mean, it's gonna swallow pretty much any kid's paraphernalia, or if you've got dogs or whatever, loads and loads of space. So this is, this is a real big bonus. It's, it's very roomy, and again, a benefit of a proper EV chassis. And if we look under here, you've got space for all your cables as well. Now, if you put the seats down, it's not flat, although there is space for a false floor which I believe is an optional extra. So I suppose once that's in, then yeah, you do have a pretty decent load bay. Right, now, the inside. If you've seen the ID3 video, you might be forgiven to thinking that you're watching the same thing again. And we'll start with this, this is the white steering wheel, which, uh, you know what, it doesn't look very nice on the brochure, it doesn't look very nice on camera, but actually I quite like it. These, again, I'm gonna assume you haven't seen the ID3 one, it's a, it's a haptic feedback, they're not actual buttons. You know, like you've got on your phone where it clicks. It just doesn't work for me. There's nothing wrong with buttons. They're just trying to, to fix something that wasn't broken. All you do is step on the brake pedal to turn the car on, so that's quite nice. And again, if I do that, you can see it changes it. I mean, you, there's a lot more you can do, I won't go through it all. And behind the steering wheel, because you can't actually see it in your eye line, you've got the gear selector, you push it, that way for reverse, you push it that way for drive and B mode, and then you press that there to put it back into park. That is the same as the ID3, it's really cheap plastic. 
This uh, colour aside, which I'm not really a fan of on the first edition, again, feels nice. It's like, uh, well, I'm going to say fake leather because it do not feel particularly high end. Now, these, again, I'll mention the same thing. I, I don't know why. It, it, it's, it's fixing something that wasn't broken. I prefer to have two for the front, two for the back. If you press that, it then activates the rear, so they go up and down at the rear. Completely by feel, this doesn't work very well because you don't know if you've pressed it. Certainly if you've got a noisy cabin or music on, so you end up looking down. You, you take your eyes off the road, and compared to having just normal four switches, where you can completely do it by feel, it's unnecessary. It's just complicating something which didn't need to be complicated. This, again, it's all touch. What was wrong with just the usual knob that Volkswagens have, which again, you can do without having to double check it by taking your eyes off the road to say, oh, did I actually press that or not? I, I, I'm not sure. These are nice and solid, good Volkswagen build. The materials used along here, again, nice soft touch, that, yeah, that, I have no problems with that. However, when we get down to this bit here, oh, this is the cheapest plastic you're ever going to come across, unfortunately. It's the it's, it's same plastic they used to use 20 years ago, I think. This here, nice and usable, two decent cup holders, and if you do that, you can make it into well, whatever else, something else. If you don't want the cups in, you've got a cubby hole. So that's not too bad, but again, it's this black gloss approach, which is going to look awful. I don't think anybody who designed cars has children. Uh, here you have some closed storage and you can adjust this, take these out so make it a little bit more practical for you. So that's quite good. And this is where your phone would go for wireless charging, only this particular model doesn't seem to have it. And you've got USB ports as well, wireless Apple and Android CarPlay or Auto, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that works really, really well. I've had no problems with that. You kind of find yourself faffing around trying to think, well, where is it? So you will get used to that. I'm, I'm not too worried. And if you want to adjust the volume, you can do that or you can do that. And what you find is that when you're adjusting the touch screen, you keep on catching this. Or when I do that, I keep on catching that. If I want to adjust the temperature, look, I've just, I've turned the audio on and I'm adjusting the temperature. You'll never do that with a physical knob. The glove box. Looks all right, looks quite wide, fits nicely. And then you open it up and find it's a complete and total joke. Half of it is missing because of the fuse box, even though it's not a French car. So that is effectively kind of useless. The seats are quite like that. This is a nice material, I mean, color aside, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, they're comfortable. Nice wide door. Now, that position there, that seat, is in a place for somebody that is very, very tall, six foot four or six foot five. And I've uh, I've got tons of space here. Look, completely flat load bit, uh, well, floor should I say, not load bit. Uh, USB ports and some nice vents, although they're at a level where they're gonna get kicked, if I know what kids are like. Uh, so yeah, there's a ton of space back here. And again, that's the benefit of a ground up EV chassis. Look at the size of the middle bench. I mean, you could actually fit a person in that. Maybe not a full adult for a long journey, but three kids will easily get into this. This, for example, is quite a nice touch. Just before I go on the road, it's effectively somewhere to put your phone. I mean, why it's not a little bit wider so you can put an iPad in for the kids, hmm, I'm not so sure. But ultimately, yeah, that's a nice little touch. The doors, cheapest plastic you're ever gonna find, cheapest plastic you're gonna find. That's not too bad. There's a few things here which don't match the value of what is a car that starts at over £40,000. And therein lies the problem. You look at that, you look at the materials used, you look at the layout, you look at a few of the design choices and think, is this a car of that value? Well, I think the first thing to mention is range. Over the last, well, let's have a look. Come on, using the hand controls that don't work very well. 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour is what this has got. Temperature right now is 14 and a half degrees. So that's all I can tell you. So I would say, if I think of this as a three miles per kilowatt hour car, as a year round average, it will of course be more in summer. Um, but in this battery size, that's gonna give you about 220 miles of real world range, I would put. On a long run, you'll get probably 250 maybe. I've had so many messages saying, well, Bjorn Nyland did this and he got really good efficiency out of it on a thousand kilometer journey it's a very good channel go and watch it I'm not knocking that at all 
or the test. It gives us good information. But a 1,000 kilometre journey is something that people either never do or do once a year. I'm more bothered about how this behaves when I'm driving it to work and then from work back there or to the shops and then back home. That's what people do 95% of the time. So unless you're a travelling salesman, it doesn't matter what you get on a ridiculously long journey. It matters what you get in real world usage. So what are your impressions now you've got in behind the wheel for a while? I actually quite like it to drive. It's nice and cosy and comfortable. It is it's nice to drive. It reminds me uh, of the XC40 in that it doesn't want to go fast. Yeah. I'm not it's not going go on. Like yeah, it, it's again. it's not a, just, what you call a driver focus. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy just sat back here and just letting you know, letting the world pass me by. And it really does soak up the. I mean, we just got over speed bump there. Yeah, yeah. Didn't feel it at all. No, no. Um, so it's very comfortable. It is. Yes. Yeah. Extremely spacious. They've got that direct steering, haven't they? That, yeah, that typical yeah, it's, it's Volkswagen not, it's not sort of steering. Big, is it? It's, no, no. Uh, there's some connection between you and the road, but you're never gonna you're never gonna need that. Eight point five seconds to sixty in DV terms is a snail isn't it really it's not quick um, it weighs 2.1 tons it's got this particular version is the higher powered version just uh, you know, roughly 200 brake horsepower so I'm not sure what the lower power version is going to feel like <laughs> less than 100 brake per ton yeah I mean around this you're going to feel the wallow a bit yeah I think most of the way it's quite low down but it's very softly set up isn't it <laughs> yeah but I can, I can live with that because that's what the car's expected. Let's have that's it. what it's going to give me. That's foot to the floor. It's sort of running out now, isn't it? And we're at 70. So it's, so it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. There's no, there's no real issues there for, no. you, for your average day to day driving. No, I don't think so. Should we try it in uh, sports mode, though? See if that. Uh... Oh, go for it, yeah. I'll see how much more oomph it's got. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's in sport mode. It's in sport mode. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to say that as a negative because, no. look, it's a big crossover SUV. It ain't a hot hatch. It's, a, it's an A to B tool, isn't it? Yeah, and although an expensive A to B tool, it's a, it, a well, lot of people... Well, to that later, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people buy these sort of cars, so they're clearly appealing, even though we don't get... I don't get it, no. ...the crossover SUV thing. Why would anybody choose a, an X5 over a 5 Series or an X3 over a, four se a three, 3 Series? Yeah. It just doesn't compute, does it? It doesn't make much sense to, to me, certainly. It's not off-road ability. No, if you're going to get an off-road, you get a you get an off-road off car. Yeah. Which would you go for? This or the Ford Mustang Mach-E? Well, Ford. Which would you go for? This or the Skoda Enyaq, which is basically the same car, slightly nicer interior and cheaper. The Skoda, because I know that even if it was the same interior, I've got it a bit cheaper. You've got it a bit cheaper. All right, then, would, would you go for this or... The Tesla Model Y when it's eventually out. Well, I've got the Tesla, of course, because of the many benefits of having a Tesla. Let's look at the gulf between this and just the Tesla Model Y, which yeah. is, you know, let's face it, whether you like them or not, Tesla are the benchmark. Aren't it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twice as fast as 60, pretty much, than this. It's 50% quicker in terms of top speed, and you've got the single greatest advantage over every manufacturer with Tesla, the supercharger network. And that is a major advantage, especially if you do any oh, sort of mileage. Yeah. So we're saying this is the worst card in top chumps? I think so, but because a lot of people would buy the X3 or the X5 over the 3 Series or the 5 Series, this will sell more. Yeah, because it's a badge. It, it, it's that safe bet. Do you think they're trying just to pull, <clears throat> not customers from other manufacturers, but Volkswagen loyal customers into buying this product, rather than buying Mm. Something else. Well, how many people do you know or have spoken to that says, oh, well, I, I, you know, I'll just get another Golf when it comes out? Yeah, yeah. And that's who this is aimed at. And, and, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. We're not saying that if you're not a car person, you don't know your stuff. It's like me with interior decorating. As long as it looks all right and it's functional, I'm happy. Yeah. But some people go, no, no, no. I want these colours. I want Laura Ashley sofas and other things we know nothing about. Yeah. That's because, Cushions. Yeah. That's because it's their interest. Our interest is, our interest is cars. Yep. And therefore, for something that is, well, if it was a colour, it would be beige. It's an emotionless purchase, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's a, it needs to be able to do this, this, and this. And it, yeah, and it, 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 it does, does that, yeah. yeah it's, uh, it, do you know, I, I'm driving it now, and I'm going. I liked it. It's it's not bad. If it's just, if I'm buying it just as a car, just to get the kids in, the boots massive, it's not bad. And then I go, 
40 42 <laughs> 42 grand starting 42 yep there's an awful lot of really stiff competition I well look at the competition that we've mentioned just in EV world yeah 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 when this first arrived I thought oh let me uh, change the settings I yeah can't, I can't remember what I was doing now it's something to do on my phone and I had to pull over yeah yeah now you could say well you're new to the car once you get used to it you're fine when I got into other cars you don't have to do that it was just instantly I yeah, think it was yeah. intuitive you didn't need to read the instruction manual yeah. to figure out what you were doing. For me, the worst things about this interior are this economy <laughs> class virgin rail thing. If yeah, you know, when you want to train, yeah, yeah, it's this, isn't it? At least I've got two, so you're not fighting over it. Now, some people, again, when I mentioned this in the ID3, probably for ID3 owners, to be fair, well, it's an armrest. Who cares? It's, it's a forty to fifty thousand pound car, fellas. Yeah, yeah, you need yeah, to yeah. up your standards. If you think that is acceptable. It's an afterthought. Uh, yeah. It's been, it's been bolted onto the seat. It has. It has. And it's probably an optional extra, <laughs> knowing Volkswagen. Mm. I mean, talk about optional extras. If you want a heat pump, which I think all electric vehicles should have a standard. Yeah, yeah. My Model 3 doesn't, but the new ones do. I just think the saving of putting it in everything. Yeah. This is an optional extra in here. Okay. All right, then. Not everybody might want one. <laughs> £1,250 for a heat pump. Well, it's Volkswagen's trick, isn't it? Mm. The whole Volkswagen brand comes with stuff with nothing on it. Everything's optional, actually. Ex everything is, yeah. So, ultimately, it's a weird one for me, is this, because I can't find anything wrong with it. Like we said, no red flags. No, no, no. Other than the fact that the competition outclasses it or outpaces it in nearly every category. It's very it's very it, spacious, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, It's a really... I mean, look at that. It's colossal. Tons. Three adults in the back of there. Yeah. Quite comfortably. So I think if you need a comfortable, uh, practical family car, superb. I quite like that. So they've done some right cool yeah. things, like that light bar. Yeah, yeah. That's a really cool but, touch. But then why put this in here? Oh, God, the, yeah. I mean... Why not have that as part of the light bar? Yeah. I'm it, sure that's an LED as well. Do you remember when you used to get a third-party alarm fit on your car 20 years oh, ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they drilled a hole in the yeah, dash. Yeah, yeah, and then hot put, glued some in. Yeah, that's what that is. And although it's a very minor detail that really doesn't matter to anybody. 42 grand. Yes. <laughs> it's bolted together beautifully. Oh, it's not rattled at all, has no, it? No, no, I not, mean, it, it, the build it quality is sturdy. Fine, yeah. It's yeah. just the material is used compared to the price charged. This is just cheap plastic. Yeah, there's no... It's not environmental. It's no. not for any other reason other than to save money. And that seems to be across the entire Volkswagen group at the moment, doesn't it? The new Golf that's out. Yeah, this isn't just an ID thing, is no, it? No, I it's, think it's it, the yeah. whole the It's whole almost like group. they've had a big fine recently. Nah. It's a little bit noisy than I expected on uh, motorway speeds. Yeah. I mean, I can hear tire it. noise. Yeah, it's there. Quite a bit of wind noise from the wing mirrors as well, I think. Can you hear a whistle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen the film Equilibrium? I certainly have. It's a good film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was basically where emotions were banned. You know, nothing, it's yeah. like no music, no painting, no art. Everything's white walls, you know, just, just beige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The designer of this car lives in that world. <laughs> I think he does. And the annoying bit is, is it's nice to drive. Yeah. You know what this car needs? Some tattoos. It needs some tattoos. Belly it button piercing. Needs a vajazzle. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cars what tofu is to food. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We've got there, we've found the analogy. The Volkswagen tofu. <laughs> it's all right, but you're not eating out of choice. No. It's a pot noodle, but with the sachet removed. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, there's nothing wrong with this car. It's a personal preference thing, isn't it? I think yeah. it's just, if you like there's no personality. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know what, I'll leave it up to you. This has probably been the worst car review in the world because we've basically said, it's great, but it's not. Yeah. It's not exciting, but it's practical but it's not because there's better I don't I'll know. still stand by test drive it you might really like it yeah it's yeah. one of them isn't it so what we've basically told the public is that nothing you have to still do Make all the decisions. work yourself yeah. <laughs> I think we should go now yeah yeah right That's enough damage for one day yes subscribe all that sort of malarkey uh... oh I need a drink thanks for watching I'll see you soon see ya